Well, I'm here in the glass houses here at Rothamsted Research, and we're looking at some wheat plants here uh, that have got a particularly special quality. Uh, and I'm here with uh, Professor Nigel Holford. So tell me, Nigel, what is the uh, special quality that these wheats have? Well, we've used a genome editing technique called CRISPR, which people may have heard of, to knock out um, a gene called ASN2, or Asparagine Synthetase 2. And that uh, gene encodes an enzyme that makes asparagine. Asparagine is just a, uh, a bog-standard amino acid, one of those used to make proteins. But during cooking, processing, things like baking, it gets converted to a toxic uh, contaminant called acrylamide. So we're trying to reduce the potential for acrylamide formation uh, in eight wheat products. Tell me a little bit more about the acrylamide. Uh, so you, you say that it, it's a problem when you bake or you toast or you cook. Yeah, so it's not in the crop itself. It yeah. forms during uh, high temperature cooking, baking, roasting, toasting, uh, and high temperature uh, processing. There's some acrylamide in bread. You right. get a lot more when you toast it. Right, well, I, I like my toast quite well done, but, but that, then that's my choice. But why is it a problem for the food industry? Well, we have benchmark levels. were set by the European Commission for the presence of acrylamide in food. Those rolled over into UK law for Brexit. The European Commission is uh, about to go a step further and set maximum levels right. for acrylamide in food, above which it would be illegal to sell a product. But I can tell you the levels that we think they're going to bring in, you know, the proposals we've seen, there will be failures. So just thinking about the, the particular products that we could be talking about here, um, are, are there particular products uh, that might be interested in this low acrylamide wheat that you've been Well, everything, uh, you know, made from wheat. Uh, yeah. Bread itself, uh, biscuits, breakfast cereals. Those are the, the prime ones. So let's talk about the project itself now, Nigel. What is the plan with these plants? So it looks like quite a lot of plants is these two uh, glass houses, we call it in the context of agriculture, it's a tiny number of plants yeah. and we have to bulk it up. So these are the only ones of this sort on the planet and um, so the idea is we have, we will have 2,000 plants in these pots, we will harvest the grain um, probably towards the end of this year and then we'll be planting it um, uh, in the spring of next year to bulk it up and we will then hopefully get tens of tons of grain, which can then go through real-world food um, pilot plants. So that's tremendously exciting. So mm. we hope to see, of course, the, the big reductions in acrylamide that we've seen uh, just on the, our really small bench level in um, a big real-world food pilot plant. Just going back to the food and what the food manufacturers do, uh, they, they, they keep the acrylamide levels um, uh, low in the, in the products at the moment, I think, um, through Absolutely. the use of... Absolutely. So it's, you know, it's a really, it's something they pay particular attention to. Yeah. One of their big issues. So there's a certain amount they can do at the processing, so controlling the, uh, the time of cooking, the temperature, it can be really good control on that. Yeah, so instead of them having to do um, extra processing, for example, in order to get the acrylamide levels low, if they were using... It's almost less processed. Exactly. They would like to toast more yep. to give you more flavour, more texture, but they can't do it because they get too much acrylamide. Well, with these um, grain from these plants, that wouldn't happen. So we're talking about real benefits for consumers here, aren't we? Uh, uh, yes, the other benefit is for consumers to reduce their exposure to acrylamide from their diet. Can you give me an idea, Nigel, you know, how long you've been working on, on this wheat and on this tree? Well, on the acrylamide issue generally, I mean, acrylamide was only discovered in food in 2002, almost by accident, really. Right. Um, we started working on it in 2004, so 20 years ago. Right. So really key thing was changing regulations. So the Genetic Technologies Precision Breeding Act, which uh, came into force last year, so how is this project going to help then? Well, I think it's tremendously important that we'll have this stuff growing on farms. Mm. Farmers will see it. I hope farmers, yeah. I hope, will demand it. I think we're interacting with food businesses. Hopefully if they see you know, massive reductions in acrylamide in their product, 
uh, and the potential for that, they will demand that uh, this comes through. It's really important that we are showing a pathway. Mm. And I think we could also start interacting with regulators as well and see how that works and show everybody else how that works.